Now I could have done 9000 runs with this guy as well, but given that I've recently started a new job and don't want to get fired in the first few months, we'll keep the tempo down here and just go ahead with 3000. Welcome to the Grind Diaries everyone, and today our host is going to be the Berserker Barbarian. Now as is customary, I will quickly gloss over the gear which for the most part is standard. The only thing to take note of here is the use of IK Helm instead of a Shaco because it looks infinitely better and provides more MF than a Shaco would have. And for my source of cannot be frozen, I have chosen Trang's belt. Now if you want a more detailed look at this guy's gear, you may refer to the post mini playthrough linked in the cards, but for right now, we're going to look at the run. Now for the run, I started off in the pits with this guy because it is one of my favorite areas to magic find. I had huge success with the hammered in in this area as well and this guy can actually run it faster than the hammer bro because he only focuses on bosses and champions and does it all on players 1. Where he picks up though is by having a huge figure of 690% magic find on his own self and the skill find item with a 54% chance to make a boss drop double the loot. Now players 1 does mean that the chances of getting high runes will be slim, that's where LK comes into the picture. I can't get it around my head why everyone and their mother doesn't finish up their magic find runs with an LK run. The amount of time you spend doing it is less than half a minute, but the returns can be massive with the super chest dropping some juicy jewels, charming charms and high level high runes. That joke fell on its face very quickly, but LK runs on player 7 almost always pay out, as you will see in this run compilation. Finally, to cap it all off, I finished with a nice quick pindle run, which again, takes like 10 seconds to do, but when your luck is in, pindle doesn't disappoint because he can drop every item in the game, bar Arachnid's Mesh, Azurath and Tyrael's Might. That was a quick rundown of the character. If you want a more in-depth explanation of things, my post mini playthrough can probably help you best there. For this video, it's time to look at my runs running these three areas 1000 times. Now we're starting off at Pindle of all people on run 7 and we're starting out with me forgetting to press the record button while doing the run. Thankfully the drop was not that crazy anyways. I mean yeah, it is a TC87 but it is quite possibly the worst one, the unique legend spike, Ghost Flame. Things you absolutely don't love to see, get this off my screen immediately and let's move on. Moving on to run 17 where I found a not so rare but much more usable drop of a magical jewel in the pits and it was a ruby jewel with 40% enhanced damage. I've put one of these in my death cleavers and the difference is quite noticeable so I'm glad to have another one at my disposal for when I find another sick melee weapon which needs a bit of a bump in the ED. After that on run 88 I found a shadow discipline skiller in the pits. If you're binge watching my grind diaries on YouTube you'll notice that this is kind of my speciality. Debronsky finds non-stop jaw runes, I find non-stop useless skillers, such as this one. Okay, you know what, one guy in my last video quite rightly pointed out that I maybe complain a bit too much in these videos, so you know what, I'm just going to let this one slide, just like water under the bridge and move on. Moving on to the next drop, 3 runs later I found another blue grand charm with plus 1 to skills and this time it was plus one to war cries. <sighs> Must resist complaints, not good for viewer retention. Right, moving on. Run 94. This time it was my first drop from LK. That's pretty cool. And it is a magical grand charm and it is... Okay, but at least you see why I complain so much though, right? You can't even make this stuff up. Right, you know what, for your viewing pleasure and my sanity, I'm not going to show you any more of these. Therefore, the next drop that you'll see is not going to be yet another skiller. You're welcome. 
Moving on, back in LK at run 119, I found a... Okay, but it's a good one, right? Peacomb. I have already done all I think I will do with my paladins, but if in the future I feel like reliving the most grindy days of my life, these could always be used for a laugh. Let's get to some actual drops now, shall we? On run 127, I found a TC-87 from the pits that I hadn't found before, surprisingly, some ogre gauntlets, which are quite common as far as high-level uniques go, steel rents. Now, not only are these easier to find than a lot of TC-87s, but they are more useful too, since they provide a range of stats that look pretty good at first glance. 47% enhanced damage, that goes up to 60%, 10% crushing blow, defense, and strength with max rolls of 210 and 20, respectively. The reason that you don't see them being used as often as laying of hands or even blood gloves is their huge 185 strength requirement, which only a few characters can afford, since that is a lot of points out of vitality. But I have a plan to use this on a two handed zealer, which would work quite nice overall. Now on run 150 we get to the biggest drop of this video yet. It always happens at around this run time it seems. Last time I found a burr rune around this time and for this video a fallen dropped me a unique diadem instead. My second griffin's eye. Not as good as the first one. Not good at all actually, I mean, geez, it literally has the worst possible negative lightning res and one off of anti-perfect lightning skill damage. But it's okay, because it's a Griffins. It is just one of those iconic items that you can't help but feel happy about finding, even if it turns out to be crap, just because of how rare and still useful it is. Speaking of useful, my next drop was quite useful as well from LK as it was a magical jewel, a rusty jewel of fervor. We're moving up in the world, boys. My best jewel before this was a Cinnabar Jewel of Fervor with 9% enhanced damage, and now I have a 15% enhanced damage one. Only 25 away from the 1540 dream, but I'll take it for when I find another one of those perfect TC-87s like a Stormlash or something. Okay, so with those two good drops back to back, it is only fair we fit in a stinker here, a green Corona from the pits. This is still a very rare drop and would be pretty good if I hadn't found two of these already before, but sadly I have and would have much rather liked the Caduceus or the Vortex Shield or in some silly land a unique Corona for the Grail, but no luck just yet. I say that and within 7 runs the luck came back with one of those elusive Holy Grail finds, this time from Pindle of all people. A unique Thunder Maul which actually turned out to be the Cranium Basher. Now this could have either been the Earth Shifter which is way more common but I ended up finding the much rarer CB and that's a fair acronym for this weapon because that's what it adds, 75% crushing blow. That's huge. If only Blizzard had not trolled us all and actually made two-handed weapons usable on guys like Whirlwind Barbarians and Fury Druids, this would have been a monster find. But as it stands, even with its chance to cost of amplified damage, 25 to strength, pretty poor roll on ED though, being 8 off of anti-perfect, it honestly just would be too slow at the end of the day for either of those guys because they don't benefit from off-weapon attack speed. Two-handed Zealer then, I guess? Maybe? Anyone? Well that will have to wait at least 733 runs because on run 267 we got our next showworthy drop. Now it was a unique tiara and I've shown this items many times before but this roll was so good I just had to include it again. Ethereal with 69 all resistances. The 12 year old inside all of us I'm sure is very happy to see that and honestly I just find these very useful to go on certain mercenaries especially when doing uber runs so I'm happy with this drop overall. Another drop that I was happy with no matter what was a unique spired helm that I got in the pits on run 276. 
The reason being that I needed the Whale of Steel for the Grail that is holy, and getting a Nightwings is just happy days. It turned out to be the former, and I'm okay with it because, like I mentioned, this is something I had not found yet, so that's nice. It's not particularly useful or anything, I mean, the 50 all res and stats are nice for like a mercenary helmet, but when you have Kira's, which adds even more res and also cannot be frozen, uh, what's the point, right? Plus this requires 192 strength, so I can't imagine putting this on one of my characters either. Still, cool to collect nonetheless. Keeping on the same train there, 29 runs later I found a unique Kraken shell from the pits. Now this is a drop that I have found while leveling one of my characters for Ubers, but it's the first time that I've recorded it, a Leviathan. Unfortunately this one is just as bad as the last one I found. The ED is perfect, the straight defense and strength bonuses are middling, but the stat that matters the most, damage reduction, is one off of anti-perfect, with the max roll being 25. This again falls into the same theme of high strength required may be fit for mercenaries only gear, which I've been finding a lot recently, but I can actually see myself using this. If nothing else, just for the green color scheme and the unique look that it would provide. Next up though, I got a very useful drop that would benefit all elemental damage dealing characters. It was a unique jewel and it was a sick one as well, 5-5 lightning facet. Oh baby. Now a lot of people get excited about the die modifier on this as well. I was never able to understand the reasoning behind that, but whatever. The 5-5 five five is a huge bonus to lightning damage, whether I decide to put this alongside a Griffins, on a Lightning Sork, or in something like a J-Mod for my Javzon. Speaking of the Lightning Sork, I did get a bit of a bump for her damage in LK in the form of a Skiller. Nothing special, but always nice to collect these plain plus one to lightning skills for the Sorceress Grand Charms. The next drop though was the opposite of nothing special. When we start out in our Diablo 2 journeys, there are certain rares everyone dreams of finding, and this is one of them. Rare antlers with plus 5 to NATO. Albeit, some of the worst rare antlers with plus 5 to NATO out there, I mean, it's plus 2 to elemental skills instead of druid skills, it has got low rolls on both plus energy and life, and dual res but of the completely wrong elements, but it's fine. I cannot lie, I was jumping with joy when I found these because as fate would have it, I plan to do MF runs with the druid next, so no matter how horrible these are, they're perfect for me and I can't wait to put these on my druid and trying them out. Alright, to calm down though we got a duplicate in the form of an old friend, the good old good old Unique Scourge, Stormlash. Now that I've found a perfect one of these before, the Unique Scourge doesn't really excite me anymore since I can't really top that now, can I? I mean, I guess I could have gotten an anti-perfect one to complete the collection, which this thing had the potential to be, but I'll still take it. It's still a class drop at the end of the day anyways. The next drop though was glorious. No, I won't give in, I won't give in until I'm victorious. Sorry, that was probably really annoying unless you get the reference, but yeah, the glorious axe, Executioner's Justice from Pindle, who is really paying out more than I thought he would. This is the newest addition to the grail that he has provided me, another TC-87 and another two-handed weapon that is sadly too slow. Unlike the Cranium Basher though, this provides Decrepify chance to cast, instead of amp damage and it applies it when an enemy is killed, which is interesting. The ED roll on this weapon is from 240 to 290, so getting 250 isn't the greatest and to round it all up it has negative target defense and 25% crushing blow. Again, because I can't use something like this on a fury druid, the only place I see this going is in the hands of a two-handed zealer with fanaticism support. I don't know when I'll make that character or how, but I guess I have two solid candidates that would love to fill in his weapon slot now. So that's something. 
Now from TC87 and Pindle, we move on to some skillers and LK, where I found two fire skillers for the sorceress back to back. The first one was plain on run 391, but still nice since I am a bit lagging in these, but the next one was nicer, 5 runs down the road with plus 1 to fire skills and 16 to life. Love to see that, especially for someone as frail as the sorceress. Now the next drop came on run 401, and I don't know if you boys would put it in the same echelon as some of the higher level uniques I've found, but it is something that I really wanted, a unique mighty scepter which is the heaven's light. Now I used this in my recent uber running video and there I mentioned that I only had one socket on that one. Well this one solves that problem since if you just put two shale runes into this, something like a smiter will not need any other off weapon IAS with a maxed out fanaticism which is really nice and allows for more flexibility while choosing gearing options. Next we get to a drop type that you would be quite familiar with if you watched my MF runs, or for that matter anybody's MF runs, a duplicate TC87. Uh, this one always hurts because you know that you could have gotten something equally rare and much more desirable, but instead you got the same ogre gauntlets again and they're worse enhanced damage wise than your last ones. Scenes we absolutely love to see. Smiley face. Well, duplicate uniques are not always bad, and especially if they're of the jewel variety, like on run 462, where I got another facet, and another amazing one at that. 4-5 called facet. I swear to god I never find decent facets, so what's happened here is nothing short of a miracle. But I'll take it, because my cold and lightning sorceresses are looking a lot stronger as a result of it. Another way duplicate uniques are not bad is if there's something special, something iconic, something like the second unique diadem of this run project. From the pits, yet again, a 1715 Griffin's Eye. The best griffins I had found before this was a 1714, so this is, in shock news, indeed an upgrade, though not by much since you really want the negative lightning res number to be as high as possible. Actually you don't really need anything when you found a griffins, so I'm not going to grumble at all. Second griffins in around 500 runs? That's why the berserker barbarian exists ladies and gentlemen, that 700 mf paying out huge. Well, one reason to not run a Berserker Barbarian is that you'll mostly be magic finding on players 1 and you won't find any nice runes. LK helps compensate that and Exhibit A is available on run 483 with a Gull rune from LK. Not the most exciting one, but definitely useful, if for nothing else than to just cube up to a Vex down the road. Now the next drop is a bit of a weird one because I don't know if it's amazing or I'll just show you. Run 496 I was finishing off at Pindle when he dropped me a blue monarch. Now people who know this game well would have guessed what this could be but then you'll see that it is ethereal and it is a jeweler's monarch of restoration instead of a jeweler's monarch of deflecting. Now for the people who don't know, Jmod, as it is more popularly known, is a blue monarch with the suffix off deflecting which adds 30% faster block rate for something like a Javazon since you can put 4 lightning facets in it and have massive damage potential through it. What I have here is literally my first jeweler's monarch I found in like 14,000 plus runs that I've done of this game, but it lacks the deflecting mod. Obviously this has me thinking, how useful is that deflecting mod actually? I mean normally with the Javazon you'll be using Lightning Fury and sniping out monsters from afar and thus increased blocking really doesn't help you out at all. Therefore the Eth look I believe, if for nothing else than just for aesthetics and the jeweler's mod on this monarch is going to make an excellent pairing for my Javazon. If you have differing opinions let me know, but as far as I know, this thing is going on my MF Javazon for sure. 
Well, people may be split on the functionality of a JMod versus the looks of a JMore. What they can't be split on is the usefulness of this next drop. Run 510, LK finally pays out in full when I found a Sir rune from one of the super chests. There is a minuscule chance that you'll ever find any high rune while running with this guy and that's why I like to throw LK in the mix just to massively amplify the likelihood of it happening. Oh by the way, those of you who have watched my paladin video till the end already know the fate of this sir rune. Yes, I know, I already have a functioning enigma, and yes, I know that there are many rune words that I have yet to craft that can be helped by the jaw and sir runes, but on this channel, when we go in, we go all the way. I mean, what's the point of having an enigma if you don't have it on an archon plate, am I right? Now, yes, this is just a standard Archon plate, not superior, not enhanced defense or anything, but defense, fefense, who cares? Look at this! Defense is a made up stat anyways, it reduces to zero while running no matter what. The looks with this armor though are something else. Not only with the Barbarian, literally every character looks way more gorgeous in this armor. I mean, apart from the Assassin. Yeah, for her, I'll save the Dust Shroud because she just looks the best naked anyways. Not like that. Well, maybe like that, but you know what I'm saying. What's more, the Archon Plate Enigma actually has brought me good luck as well, as just 5 runs later I found another TC87 I hadn't before, Pindle paying out again as he dropped me the unique winged harpoon and check this, it was an ethereal gargoyle's bite. That's very interesting because this thing has the replenish quantity stat on it and being a throw weapon doesn't really have durability otherwise. I mean let's be real, this thing will never really be an ideal weapon for a lightning fury javazon because it has no skills or any lightning damage whatsoever, but it is cool and maybe I can make it work against ubers with the skill jab. Maybe. Those are long term plans though, but coming back to the runs at hand, 7 runs later in the pits I found another ethereal and fairly rare item in the form of a unique spired helm. Nightwings really would not have helped me here so I was glad that it was at least Whale of Steel. Yeah, I kinda talked about how this could have been interesting on mercenaries and the ethereal mod helps here, so if I ever wanna use something just for the heck of variety if nothing else. This is not a bad shout. Alternatively, with this stride of finding ethereal rare uniques, I would have rather seen something like ceremonial javelins or scarab shell boots, even an eth unique thresher would have been really nice. Therefore, in that vein, next up I did end up finding one of those useful ethereal uniques in the form of a unique winged axe which was my first ethereal lacerator. I mean this thing is great. I got pretty good enhanced damage as well with the roll being from 150 to 210 and the ethereal mod makes it a really solid throw weapon as well as a melee weapon on something like a frenzy barb or your run of the mill zealer. I've had conversations in my comments about how this can be an effective solution to substitute life tap during uber runs and I would love to give it a go sometime soon. Alright moving on. Run 622 got me a nice rare in the pits in the form of a rare coronet and it was a 221 for the assassin. Now that's good. I don't really like using a shako because I think it looks ugly and just the fact that it is so OU and this is going to be my replacement for my assassin. Now yes, this lacks the huge life and magic find bonus that I would get from shako but really Sins have great life pools as it is, and I mainly use trap sins for running key bosses like Countess, Nilathak, and Summoner, and this thing will give me plus due to skills which will help me take down monsters at player 7 easier, and also 20 FCR which will help me in teleporting with Enigma. Really good stuff overall. It's actually rare that I find a useful rare, pun intended, so much so that I had people calling me out that I don't even pick up rares in my last MF video. No, I do, I just don't end up finding any good ones. 
that changed here since on the very next run I found pretty much the best rare ring I have found while playing this game. This time from LK having 10 FCR, 23 lightning res, 28 fire res and 29 poison res. That's really good as well. Especially for something like an Ancient Tunnels Blizzard Sorceress which always struggles with resistances including poison resistance, this would be great and I am very happy to find something so useful. It is only fair then that LK after that returns the favor by giving me something very non-useful next. Now I know that I said that I won't show bad skillers anymore, but when I get them with plus 26 to life, come on man, why not just roll plus 1 to traps instead? To be fair, I really don't know much about the martial arts assassin, but I'm guessing that being a melee character, a max damage AR charm would be much more suited to her, thus making this find completely irrelevant. Brilliant. Speaking of bad rolls, remember a few minutes I told you about how my luck with facets is not that good? Well run 790 backs me up on that since I found a 3-3 cold facet in the pits. Well it's not that bad right? Yeah well it is when you look at the facet that I found just before it. Yup, that's what I'm usually getting from these, but it's not the end of the world since they're pretty good for beefing up any elemental characters nonetheless. Now run 795 gave me another unique that I was very happy to find, but maybe it's not the most exciting thing ever. A unique tyrant club from the pits which was the demon limb. Those of you who have watched my recent mini playthrough of the Frenzy Barbarian and my uber runs will know that I had somehow lost my other demon limb and all I had was an ethereal one which I couldn't use the enchant charges from since I couldn't repair them afterwards. This therefore is a big relief to find because those level 23 enchant charges really do add a significant amount of attack rating for melee characters and every bit counts especially when you're going up against the ubers. Run 808 got me a nice mid rune at LK since it was an ist rune from the super chest. Again not the most exciting but definitely needed especially after I had exhausted all my previous ones in the 6 socketed phase blade for this berserker barbarian. Something that was exciting dropped on run 861 in the pits and it was another 220 circlet tiara thing. This time 20 FCR, 12 all res, but with plus 2 to cold skills. Aw oh man, the reason for my disappointment is that I would almost always prefer Nightwings to this on cold sorks because of the much higher damage that that will add. Plus this could have been really amazing if only it had rolled plus 2 to fire skills or just straight up plus 2 to sorceress skills. Another unfortunate victim for the it's good. It's just not good enough list. The 220 tiaras didn't stop there though as just 6 runs later I found another one in the pits, this time 220 paladin with 38% fire res. A bit too little too late with this one. <laughs> Actually to be fair this with a perfect topaz would have been great for my hammerden since he did struggle with his fire res quite a bit to the point that I had to put a Ral rune in my Shaco. It's just I think I've done all the magic finding in the world that I would want to do with a hammerden and thus in the stash this shall go and in the stash this shall stay. That was hard to say. Okay. Then on the same run I ended up finding another job. Ugh. I like how I don't even pick them up for like 10 seconds. That's how you know a person hates an item. Not even the temptation of picking up a unique can overcome that. Eventually I did though and they actually turned out to be the best role on Dracules that I've ever found. Which I guess really isn't saying much. Really though, I enjoy seeing you boys resonate with my loathing for these gloves and recommending me with alternative options and I feel like that's what I'm going to do in the uber runs and trying those alternative options instead of these guys. So yeah, sorry red gloves, in the stash you go.
One thing that is not going to be staying in the stash and definitely will be used is a skiller that I found from LK on run 879. Plus one to summoning skills for the Necromancer with 7% faster run walk. We love the Necromancer on this channel and this would help in the summoning variety while we take down the Ubers with one of those. 11 runs later I got another unique Spired Helm and the Whale of Steel was a good find when I found it for the first time. Now it's just not Nightwings, which is just a little bit frustrating because I do want to find a good one of those and don't want to keep finding the same one of these over and over again. Game, please. Turns out the game actually mistook that last remark because I ended up finding absolutely nothing for the next 100 runs. The luck was completely barren to the point that I had started worrying that I would have to end the video on a duplicate Whale of Steel, which is never nice. That is what it was looking like though. Run 998, found nothing. Run 999, found nothing. Run 1000 in the pits, nothing. Run 1000 in LK, nothing. Nothing upon nothing. Until there was only one left. Until he dropped the rare amulet. It's not bad, is it? I mean, plus two to combat skills is what you want from the paladin tree, right? 57 to life is really good, and I mean, all res... Eh, if I found this on a mini playthrough, I'd be ecstatic, but uh, yeah. Even if my mind was evil enough to finish the video on this, my heart just won't allow it. I know, right? My videos are a bit longer, and for the boys that stick around till the end, I want to end it for them with a little something something, you know? So even though my 3000 runs were over, I still went on searching for a big pull. That conquest ended on run 1041. I know you boys are going to like this one, a unique Colossus Blade at the pits. Now again, we used this sword in the uber runs and absolutely loved it. It is obviously an icon being the grandfather. Is it the best role? No, not really, with ED rolling from 150 to 250, this is decidedly below average, but quite like Griffins, there's just something about the sword that you can't complain about. Thus, with that, ends our 3000 MF run journey with the Berserker Barb. This project now obviously took a lot less time for me to make than my previous one and I feel like that is something that is sustainable and something I can do throughout the year to come. As far as luck goes, I found plenty of decent TC-87s like I hoped for. Still no sacred armor, but you know, can't complain too much when I've just found two diadems instead, right? LK definitely seemed to give out under average with only one high rune in over a thousand runs, but... That's just how RNG be sometimes. Overall, I hope you found this video enjoyable. Yours truly, with love.